Hi everyone and welcome along. So we are well and truly into autumn and there's so much to paint at this time of year. It's a really inspiring time. Today we're going to paint something I've not done on YouTube before. We're going to do a pumpkin field with a scarecrow in the middle. Um, perfect for the season, so grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so I have a 6 by 8 inch piece of paper and I'm just drawing a horizon line, sort of just a bit lower than halfway down. And then I'm just gonna create a, a vertical line for my scarecrow and let's, let's make him. So we're gonna do a scarecrow in a pumpkin patch. So he's gonna have a, a pumpkin head and maybe a little wobbly kind of straw hat. And um, by the way, for anyone who is feeling like they're not sure about their drawing skills, the best thing you can do is when I've finished doing the drawing, just uh, do a screenshot and um, you can then just sort of use that as your guide if either tracing things. So I've got two uh, horizontal lines now and we'll have a bit of string. Have a bit of string around the waist. And then that can be a be a post. And then we'll have Let's have a few a few crows sitting on it as well, which I think will be fun. So for the birds, we start with a little oval shape and that can give us the head on top, wings and then maybe some, some feet and we might just see a bit of the bird on top and then I mean the bird down behind and then we'll have one looking out that way as well um, let's give him a smile maybe a toothy smile And there he's in the field. So that's our drawing. And then what I thought we'd do is we'll have a few sort of pumpkins around the base. And I've just done those by sort of creating that round shape. And then they can have a few swirly leaves and things. But in the background, we're going to have a nice sort of sunrise. So the brush that I recommend you using to get this nice sort of background in is the nice large ProArt size 12 pointed round that I sell in my shop. And I'm just going to sort of paint around the edges of the scarecrow. I'm not too worried about overlapping on him too much. but I am going to paint the area in behind the pumpkins as well with water. So we're just getting everything nicely, nicely wetted. What we don't want is any puddles of water. You can sort of tilt your head to one side and if the water catches the light, you'll be able to see if there's any sort of deeper puddles of color. And then I'm going to create a, a sunrise, which I think will be quite fun. Um, so I've got some cadmium yellow, some cadmium orange. I think some permanent rose will be nice. But also we always need a bit of Payne's gray lurking in that sunrise, don't we? So I'll just clean off the brush and then we'll get going. So I'm beginning by just loosely painting in some cadmium yellow 
just around the edges of the scarecrow and I get a bit of orange and place that in a few sweeps and my uh, size 12 large pointed round is doing a really nice job you can see it's just that little bit lighter at the top but I'm going to drop in a bit of pink you do get the most wonderful autumn skies um, you will think of it as sort of a nice sort of holiday thing but actually they're really fantastic um, and then on the bottom half of the page we've got our field but we're still going to have the sense of the glow of the the morning sky and just yeah it's sort of bouncing off the pumpkins and everything so I'm going to begin with these light colors again so we'll just start to drop in the color now this page has retained its water really nicely you know I've been faffing about a bit I've not been rushing in and you can see it's still really nice and wet so it just goes to show good paper makes all the difference the paper I use is well I'm just really cool these days I have my own paper um, that I work with uh, Frisk uh, they make a really nice branded uh, paper pad that you can buy which is 100% cotton so what I'm just doing is I'm, I'm putting in sort of splodges of orange because these are going to turn into pumpkins later on so I'm just placing those in obviously it's wet so they're all going to sort of bleed into not very much it's not going to be very defined but now I'm going to take my smaller brush and this is when I'm going to start to paint in some slightly darker colour. I've got some burnt sienna I'm just mixing in with my Payne's Grey here and it's still very wet on the page but as I talk every second means the page is just drying in a tiny weeny bit and I can just start to subtly and slowly bring in elements of the field So I'm, I'm sort of going around the edges of the pumpkins I created and even though it's really loose you, can, you are starting to get a, just a little bit of definition. But what's really good is it does tend to sort of soften and bleed into one another even when you're building up a, a seam like this with wet watercolour. What's just really really important is that you don't overwork the shapes because then if you do you most likely will get a a blobby mess. And then down in the corners where we didn't really get the things too wet, I'm going to just start building up just a little bit of darkness but not too much. Just underneath my pumpkins. And I'll take that large brush one last time and just use it to smooth that out. And now we want to let that dry 100%. And now that's dried, we can have a bit of fun with um, painting in our, pump our pumpkin, <laughs> our scarecrow. Um, what I think would be nice is because of the the sky, we've got the sense of a, of a sunrise, that means that there's going to be quite a lot of shadow in play here. So I think anything I, I paint, I'm going to end up sort of using quite a lot of um, shadowy tones to sort of lighten, use light and shade on it. So I'm beginning with a yellow ochre base for a straw, this sort of wobbly straw hat. And you can see I'm just sort of painting it in quite loosely and 
allowing for little bits of unpainted space, a bit of burnt sienna there. By the way, this was a topic chosen by my patrons. Uh, it was a very popular one. So each month they get to, uh, this is this is Payne's Grey. So I'm just uh, scribbling that in and allowing the hat to just dry a little bit. Yeah, so every month my patrons are given the opportunity to make requests of topics on YouTube. So not only when you're on Patreon, you get extra tutorials that don't feature on YouTube, but you also get the chance to sort of have a say Oh, sorry, dog barking behind the door. I don't know if you heard that. We're looking after our neighbor's dog and he rather um, rather likes to come and get involved. Um, so I might have to let him in in a second. Um, but you can see I'm just using the Payne's Gray in different dilutions to create this slightly crumpled coat. Um, but yeah, so on, on Patreon and uh, Patreons of all tiers, are able to make a request so from as little as two pounds a month you can come on and say i'd like to paint a scarecrow in a field and um, provided it's a seasonal request and if lots of people ask for it or or if it's just one that i think you know you just you've asked for it but i think it's going to be a really good one that my youtube audience will enjoy then we paint it and so how wonderful that you get not only Patreon exclusive content, but you also get a chance to sort of ask for YouTube things as well. So I'm just making the edges of the coat a bit straggly. And up now on the hat, I'm going to use the Payne's Grey. I'm going to use some buff titanium on the shirt. I'm using a size two brush to just sort of place all these colors in. And uh, well, that's quite nice actually, just getting a bit of the Payne's gray from the, from the jacket. That's all good. We don't mind that. We're just building up these shapes and the basic colors and then we'll just place in the uh, the wooden color and the pumpkin face of course just in the same quite sort of loose scribbly way with a bit of Payne's gray in there for good measure so I'm now painting the pumpkins sorry I keep on hearing the dog barking behind the door I don't know if you do too <laughs> Um, right, size two brush, cadmium orange, and I'll show you how to do it. So we paint a sort of lozenge shape in the middle. Nice kind of soft, soft shape there. And then I'm going to basically sort of come around the side with a little C curve. Um, but we just leave a tiny bit of unpainted space. And on the other side, what I quite like is when you get just a little bit of overlap and you don't get a get a, a sort of perfect untouching C curve you might get just a tiny bit of overlap and then I've just used a bit of um, cadmium red mixed with yellow ochre to make it just a slightly darker color and I'm just adding that where I where I feel like I want to, and then just sort of filling in the back 
there. We'll be putting stalks in and things, but there's our pumpkin, so we just need to fill in those. So I'm now going to spend a bit of time just sort of working in a little bit more detail um, to some of the elements here by just sort of adding a bit more texture, maybe a bit sort of a bit more of a rough edge on the straw hat, things like that, maybe some buttons on the jacket or on the shirt even. A few more scribbles, a few more crumples, so you're just using a slightly more concentrated colour but we're trying to just keep this fairly nice and, and, and loose and not, not too sort of focused on detail but we do want to make our scarecrow look a bit threadbare so just a few little scraggly bits on the end of the jacket Maybe a bit of shadow in behind the shirt, so some more concentrated colour there. For the um, for the wood of the the frame of the coat, I just uh, I just used some some burnt sienna and scribbled it back and forth, and I'm just going to go back in and use some burnt sienna mixed with a bit of Payne's grey. just to make that a little deeper and darker and a bit stronger there as well. Oh, and of course the one in there as well. So yeah, we're just uh, making these nice little sort of elements of detail, but still in a fairly sort of, I don't know, not too, not too serious manner. We're keeping things nice and nice and simple. So I want to just do a bit of sort of looping for the rope. The colour I've used here is literally just sort of a mixture of whatever was in my palette, a bit of the uh, orangey browns, the uh, buff titanium, and some of the shadow there, and then a bit of straw coming out there. Maybe we could add a little bit of cadmium yellow actually. That might be quite fun. I, I, I think from the what you can tell from the way I'm talking, I'm coming at this sort of with a, quite a relaxed feeling. I'm not, it's not overtly planned rigidly um, and I like painting like that, especially sort of fun little illustrations like this and I encourage you to try and embrace that sense of looking at your page and going right what's on my page what's happening maybe there might be a few surprises that that pop up just adding some some orange extra orange to the pumpkin and we'll be putting in the dark details on the face with the cut the cut out elements but just for the moment Just using some orangey red tones that we used down below with the pumpkins. We've also got our crows, um, which are black, but what I want to do is, is use the Payne's Grey blue tone as well, just to get a nice bit of shaping on them. So I've just been doing all this with my size zero brush. I'll try and leave an eye there, there we go. If I if I just clean my brush off now and use quite a dilute tone, I'm basically making a lovely base for this crow that I can then go into my Mars Black and use the Mars Black as my like low light accent colour rather than anything else and that makes the crow look pretty cool to me. 
so just paint this one in as well and then we're nearly there so it's time for the final stage which is finishing touches and that includes pumpkin leaves which are a wonderful sort of three-pointed leaf that we can paint with three brush strokes just like this so I've got a size 4 brush in my hand and I'm doing one stroke and then just coming back from the beginning and doing two smaller strokes either side one two three one two three and you can see some of them are very wobbly and weird but the more you get into it the more it'll start to make sense. So I'm just going to sort of fill up the base. I'm sort of framing the piece with these leaves. I'm using sap green and I also have some green gold um, in here, but I'm sort of mainly using the sap green. And then I'm going to use my rigger brush to do the wonderful curly whirly stems and vines that you get coming off pumpkin leaves. And I'm just trying to create a sort of a feeling of them all growing in the field together. Some people find um, doing like twisty curly things with the rigger brush a bit difficult and if you do just go to a, a, a little four tenths brush and you'll find if you find the control of a rigger brush difficult then you'll much prefer a four tenths little pointed round. Now I haven't forgotten about the pumpkin stalks but I'm just trying to distract the whole piece with my wiggly wiggly stems to start off with. So for our pumpkin stalks uh, add a little bit of yellow ochre into your green gold I mean into your sap green I beg your pardon and we're going to do some twisty pumpkin stalks I'm just doing these with a size 2 brush it's not a small brush in the slightest these are quite sort of blobby and things but then I'm going to take some of this colour and we can just extend those stalks out and I just sort of join them up to one of the one of the other ones that's growing around okay so to finish off I'm just going to let this dry one last time and then we're going to add little bits of shadow and get everything just really nice and crisped up. So with some Mars Black and a four tenths brush we'll get the face in. Then with the Mars Black we can do a little bit more on our crows as well. whatever you fancy really, just a, a few little dashes of extra detail for wings and 
feathers and things. You know me, I just I just love adding a little bit of shadow here and there or a little bit of detail wherever I can. So the rope has a little bit of a a shadowy texture on it. Just from making a few dashes with the the shadowy mix of Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna. Some of these lower bits of straw you could add all sorts of things to your scarecrow you could add patches and funny little quirks or maybe you have actually got a scarecrow of your own and you could do the exact one you have just sort of adding a little bit of shadow in there under there and then what I think is quite nice to do is getting a bit of uh, green in your shadow mix and using that for elements of the leaves and it just helps bring everything out of itself just a little bit. So once we've done this we can let it all dry, rub out the pencil, see what we've got. So here it is with the pencil rubbed out and I've taken it off the, uh, the masking tape as well um, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some just general shadow. So I'm getting a nice diluted Payne's Grey uh, Burnt Sienna mix and I might find that I need a more strong colour but let's see. So the idea is is that the shadow is all going to dry a lot lighter And we've got a lot of Payne's Grey in this piece anyway, but what I find is it's just really makes the piece come alive. Um, and then we'll have some shadow there, and just underneath the pumpkins. Shadow just places things and people really well in a piece. So don't be scared of it. It can do wonderful things. And there we have your scarecrow in a pumpkin field. I really hope you enjoy painting that one. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. Now, don't forget to be watching the channel tomorrow at our usual launch time, 5.30 p.m. BST, for a very special announcement about my next watercolour retreat. But I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support, because that's uh, that enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell, and we'll see you again next time.